Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, people are always talking to me about either sports and their team lost or politics and their favorite candidate didn't get elected. and You know, about every other thing except for Jesus or God or, you know, kind of things that I like to talk about. But they're always telling me, you know, something or another about what I have to do according to what they say they want me to do. You know, like in a political year, they say things like, you have to vote for this candidate. Now, it's interesting because I think God has a sense of humor because all of a sudden, in this political year, the candidate who is a Christian, they don't want you to vote for because he's not the kind of Christian that they want you to support, you know, because he's, after all, 17 years in a church that wasn't, you know, teaching quite the same as I do, you know, or teaching like some other church might teach. And never mind that the person had been there 17 years, consistently going to church. Never mind that the person is a Christian according to some definition. We're supposed to vote for a non-Christian, anti-Christ type person. You know, a Mormon that's part of a cult that doesn't believe that Jesus is the Son of God, but believes that he is a created being. So, politics now, the Christian side of it, is telling me to vote for someone who's against Jesus. While the other person says, you know, well, he's a Muslim. And I say, wait a minute. So, you want me to vote between a Muslim who's been in a church, a Christian church, for 17 years, who no longer goes to that church but goes to another church instead, that's a, you tell me is a Muslim, and you don't want me to vote for him because he's a Muslim that's in a church that says he's a Christian. Meanwhile, you want me to vote for a person who isn't a Christian, who doesn't go to church, but goes to a Mormon temple that practices Mormon theology, who said he's always been a Mormon and always will be a Mormon and will not accept Jesus. Period. Wow. How's that politics working out for you? Me? I kind of like, you know, reading the Word of God. I kind of like praying, you know? It kind of makes more sense to me because if you're telling me what to do between the left hand and the right, I think you need new hands. <laughs> I think you've lost something along the way. I think you've got a problem. Houston, there seems to be an ignition problem because I'm not taking off in that rocket. It's going to blow up. <laughs> so, God bless you, whatever you think you got to do in politics. Woo! I'm sure glad you got to figure it out. I don't. I can trust in the Lord with all my heart. Because, you see, when I trust in the Lord with all my heart, leaning not to my own understanding, in all my ways acknowledging Him, He can tell me anything He wants me to do, and I'll do it. Because He's the one in charge. Now, if he tells me to vote for the left, I'll vote for the left. He tells me to vote for the right, I'll vote for the right. He tells me, don't vote at all, I'm not going to vote at all. Because guess what? I just do what he says to do. Don't you? Don't you, like, check it out with him first? You see, I think that's what we call obedience. I think that's why it says to obey is better than sacrifice. I may be wrong, but judging by politics... How's that working out for you? Maybe by the economy? Hmm. Maybe if we did it God's way, the economy would work out. Let me know how that works out for you. I'm always curious when people are telling me what I have to do. My brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, not mine. My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Jesus may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities. I take pleasure in reproaches. I take pleasure in necessities. I even take pleasures in persecutions and in distresses for Jesus' sake, because I know that when I am weak, then am I strong for I trust in Him. 
I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of thy righteousness, even of yours only, and not man's. <laughs> the gospel of Jesus is the power of God unto salvation. I can do all things through Jesus which strengthens me. I also labor striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. We have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. You know, praise the Lord. I'm sure glad that we don't have to wait 400 years to be delivered. Aren't you? I'm sure glad that we don't have to go into Babylon for 400 years and suffer waiting until God says, Bring them back because you obey me now. Ooh. I'm glad we don't have to spend 400 years doing anything. Matter of fact, I think a lot of people have a hard time with 40 minutes in Sunday morning. God knows. <laughs> That's scary enough for some people. But you know, I think that we can admit we're weak. I think we don't have to act like we're strong. I think we can admit that we don't need guns and roses and you know all the other things that people seem to beat each other up about. I don't think we need to be politically active. I don't think we need to be morally oh, indignation. I think we need to be about salvation of the soul. Because you know, it seems to me that when we were doing things God's way, the country was going the right way. And now that we're doing things our way, you know, being politically active and getting socially conscious and fighting for all these things that, you know, are not about the salvation of the soul. I think somewhere along the way, we kind of got off track. I think the enemy had a counterattack. I think he's like really thinking he's winning. But you know what? Funny thing about the heart, you know, my heart, your heart, we have changes of heart all the time, don't we? Funny thing in Proverbs is, is that the king's heart, God holds in his hand. He can turn it any which way he wants to. Imagine that. God being in control, able to turn my heart, your heart, the king's heart, any way which he wants to. You know, when someone has that kind of power, that kind of authority, I think I want to vote for him. You know, I think I'd like to put God in office. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot. He is in office. And he appoints people as he chooses to put in office. To be over us. And that in persecution, as well as in great time of rejoicing, God is still in control then what do we worry about when we vote? Well, you see, people like to think they're in control because they like to play God because they think that they have control. When you can walk around pretending you're in control of everything or you can admit, I don't have much of a control over these circumstances, do I? Nope. Not unless you can cause one hair of your head to turn gray or turn white or turn brown or turn red without using, you know, like bleach or coloring. You can't seem to cause yourself to grow or shrink any, you know, and God can. Matter of fact, I don't think you can really do a whole lot of anything without God. Except sin. And you can do that without God pretty easily, can't you? But I don't think you can be forgiven without God. So you see, being weak is a good thing. Being suffering sometimes is a great thing. Because if you trust in the Lord, <laughs> that suffering piece of cake, man. I'm heading home. This is not where I belong. This is just where I am strong. This is how I exercise my faith. This is where it's going to be late. Because I'm going to go. I'm going to live. I'm going to give to God today. Hey, hey, hey. You got it? We can live it or we can lose it. What are you doing today? Sunshine. I think birds are singing. I think the flowers are blooming. 
I don't think I'm losing it. Are you? Maybe if you're losing it today, you need to start choosing instead of losing and rejoicing in the fact that God is in control. And you're not, sorry, you're not made to be in control. God is.